has uh, had his opinion about how we can transform this country and he has pointed them very clearly. In fact, he goes ahead to even mention the sectors that can boost the economy and that can address issues of unemployment and also the issues of businesses, enterprises in Uganda. However, the challenge still remains with, number one, the issue of the attitude. I must say that Ugandans are more busy on politicking than going into enterprises which bring money in people's hands. When it comes to issues of politics, people are up there and, you know, they are seated from morning to evening discussing on a Marua joint or any other drinking joint, especially in the villages and even in the town areas today, all focusing on social media, looking at matters that are of, you know, just no more chats, other than investing time on productivity. If you take an example of some of these countries we are looking at that is developing so fast, even Korea, take an example. A child of five years old, six years old, 10, 15, is already being you know, trained and developed to be productive on something. Even India, almost every family has got a factory. Every family has got a business they look up to. And like Uganda, we have this kind of dependency syndrome and the so-called government at Yambe. People think government is going to do everything. That is absolutely not going to happen. Government can provide policies. Government can uh, provide a vehicle to ease you to access funds and you know invest correctly. So this is something that we as Ugandans, we must really understand the present on and pick interest and start doing something. The idea of wealth creation or having income you know, it's clear you must do something to bring money in your pockets. If every family has got something you're doing, we should actually do an, a family audit. If I belong to this family, you may ask yourself, by the way, what are we doing as a family? So when you go for this festive season of Christmas time, we sit down and say, what is the family, um, you know, monthly or annually um, revenue that we are collecting? Of course, government will have good vision and good plans in place. But the element of who does what remains with you. For example, we have money with the banks, but the bank will not just give you money. You must go and ask for it and meet the requirements. We have these initiatives like the, um, we had the Youth Livelihood Program Fund. The youth would go access this money, they buy smartphones. Others would disappear. You cannot fight poverty that way. So the problem still lies with us. Yes, we have weaknesses and challenges in government, of which some of these challenges include issues of taxes. The taxes are quite very high. That it makes it very hard for someone to survive in businesses. But also, much as the taxes are high and we have these hindrances, and for us as legislators, that's where we shall come in and address some of those issues. But as a person, do we have the work ethics? Do we have the saving ethics? Do I have a dream that I want to to get this kind of money at the end of the day. Or I am just working for today, tomorrow, and blow the money at the end of the day, and I will say I'm living a happy life. There is no government that will provide everything for everybody. You must work to get money. So the moment Ugandans don't change the attitudes of work, 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 then we are not going to achieve it. We look at white-collar jobs as the only you know, solution to our problems. No way, it can't happen. No government can provide jobs for everybody. The biggest employer is in the private sector, is in agriculture, is in ICT, is in other sectors. So you just have to find out what you can, what solution you can offer. Then you'll emerge a billionaire, you'll add a millionaire. And the issues of corruption, of course, I cannot fail to mention. Some people today look at those who get rich faster as they are the most brilliant and successful people in the society. So what is government doing to fight that? Because a young boy, a young girl of 15 years old must appreciate work rather than hitting or working smart or hitting a deal and getting something out of it. So we need to really engage in this uh, conversation as a country, as a generation, as those who are well-wishers of seeing Uganda transform. And I can still repeat it. The problem is not about President Museveni. The problem is not about a member of parliament. The problem is not about LC5 chairman. The problem is you. It is only you as a Ugandan who can choose the kind of life you want. You don't want to make money, you definitely stay poor. And those who want to make money, 
will work hard and of course making money meaning the right way of making money not stealing or looting public funds or cheating anybody but we must get out there and start preaching work 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 school but also work what is that skill that i can attach to my law degree to my medicine that can give money as i'm waiting for my salary it's a conversation we must go in and go in very candidly to have business and um, people who are in public sector people are doing business peace is the first priority that government has done and for ugandans case we are peaceful amid is all the small challenges that we have of you know uh, theft and these small trivial things but we can generally say uganda is a peaceful country so if we really have peace then we are now looking at access to finances for me to start up a business a restaurant i need money to buy saucepans to buy this to buy that so i need access to funding now that is where the government has tried to find a solution many solutions it came up with all different interventions of government projects. You find NADS came in, uh, we have a MIOGA, we, have, we had um, the, the, the Youth Livelihood Program, we have the Women Fund, we, we have the Parish Development Model, we have all these interventions. But also there is a challenge with those interventions, because there seems to be a duplication and a replica of some of the things that were done in the past and did not work and is still being done. So we also need to draw away from the push projects to the people and look at demand-driven. If Lillian Abe would like to be um, maybe an agriculturist who wants to do farming on a large scale, I should be able to show interest and say I want to do A, B, C, D. This element of looking at the critical mass is important. You know, it's not about the numbers. But it's about the effectiveness. I am very comfortable with helping five people in Kirkum district. But I see that the return for investment that government has put is there. And I can speak to it. But other than having in, in, on paper 300 or 3,000 people who received trivial money and the money got lost within. Dealing with a population that is poor, you must know that whatever drops on their plate, they will look at first addressing their needs, their basic needs. So this affects, and they, all these people are treated differently. But you, you, you have to look at also other models of supporting farmers or supporting those who are already at a certain takeoff stage. We just need to boost them, and they can offer employment opportunities, mentorship, and address these matters. Otherwise, this, these things will not work. These government projects will not work if we continue doing the same things the same way. Then also the issue of markets. Uganda. We have not invested a lot in procuring markets for our products. The other uh, thing, two years ago, there was a talk about cassava, cassava, bro, cassava. Everyone went into cassava. When the cassava was ready, there was no market. And so our local people down there, someone in Kitgumatidi, someone in Mochwini, cannot have access to markets in Kenya. We cannot have access to markets in, in Tanzania or Rwanda or somewhere else. So we need a linkage. We need someone to be linking these people and also protect them from those who come and buy, you know, exploit them, the middlemen. These are the challenges. So if I spend time planting my crops, the middleman takes almost more than half of my profit. Where is the zeal? Even if we talk about let's do, um, let's, do let's go into commercial agriculture. Commercial agriculture, first of all, I can't afford it. And if I go accessing loans, it's expensive, the interest is high. The projects you're bringing, you're saying we need you to be in a group. So someone is left and wondering what else can I do. And they sit back. But attitude for work in Uganda is a problem.